Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. We are continuing our 3D printing adventure in the LEGO world. If I count it correctly, this is the fourth video in this series. You can watch all the previous episodes by clicking on the link in the top right corner. Today I'm going to show you a printer that many of you have asked for in the comments, and to be honest I was very interested in it as well. So far I have only used FDM printers, you know the ones that melt a filament and build the models layer by layer. But there is another main category of consumer 3D printers that use resin instead of filaments. Creality was kind enough to send us this Halo OnePlus resin 3D printer along with the UW2 wash and cure machine, so I'll be using them this time. Here's the usual disclaimer because I think it's always good to set expectations. This is not a product review video, I will show the most important aspects of the printer, but that's not the main focus. I'm not an expert. Today you will see the result of the first couple of weeks I spent experimenting with this printer. I'm making these videos to document our journey in the world of 3D printing, I'm trying to explore the possibilities, show you what challenges you can expect, and try to find creative ways to use these devices in the LEGO world. An important and satisfying moment in any unboxing. We are moving from the studio to my workshop slash storage room because resin printing is definitely messier than FDM printing, more on that in a moment. As you can see, things are upside down in a resin printer, the build plate is on top and at the bottom we have a screen that allows the UV light to pass through a pattern that solidifies the resin layer by layer. Time for leveling, there's a thick sheet of paper for that, there are 4 screws to loosen, then the platform goes down, you need to push the bed down firmly and tighten the screws, that's it. Here is the vat, you need to remove the plastic cover from the bottom. Here is the resin from Creality that we use. Before we get started, a few words about safety. Resin is toxic and should never touch your skin if it hasn't cured yet. If you may come in contact with the liquid resin, wear nitrile gloves. Proper ventilation is also important when working with the resin and IPA. We need to shake the bottle and then pour some resin into the vat. I chose Lychee Slicer because it seemed the most convenient for me. There is a free version, but for some functions you have to upgrade. I opted for a small Benchy as my first print. The menu is easy to navigate and pretty clear, so here we go. Despite the small size, it takes more than 2 hours to print this item, but resin printers work differently, so you have to keep that in mind. With an FDM printer, if you put multiple items on the build plate, it will take significantly longer because the print head has to make each item individually. With resin printing, the time is primarily affected by the number of layers, which is the height of the build, rather than the surface it covers. This means that you can literally fill your build plate with items and it will still take the same amount of time. Another difference, if you are printing small items, you can't really see what's going on until the end of the printing process, since most of it happens below the surface of the liquid. So here we are, the first print is finished. If everything went well, the objects must hang on the build plate like this. In the package there is a metal scraper that you can use to remove the objects from the build plate. Make sure you have something on the table where the excess resin can drip off. Now comes the second piece of equipment, yes we unpacked it earlier. This is the wash and cure machine, which is even larger than the printer itself. It has a plastic container that you put your wash liquid into, usually isopropyl alcohol. For curing you use this turntable which has a very nice reflective surface. You have to put this rubber ring on the side to keep the prints from falling off, this was probably the trickiest part of the process. So, we need to pour enough IPA into the container to cover the objects. So, the object is in the container and there aren't many options. We select wash, normal speed, set the time and off we go. The direction of the propeller changes every minute to help the washing process. There are several ways with these supports and when to remove them, I chose to do this after the wash and before curing. When we are done, the object must dry first, in the meantime we can replace the turntable. Curing is necessary to solidify the resin with the UV LEDs, but we shouldn't leave the object in there too long, 3 to 5 minutes should be enough. And here it is, the first tiny Benchy. I think the resolution is amazing, it really has some super tiny details and turned out very nice. So that was my first successful attempt, it was time to print something LEGO related. And that was where I faced some challenges. As you can see, I made a lot of test prints, really a lot. I used practically the whole bottle of resin for that. I don't want to go through each test chronologically because that would take a lot of time. I would rather list the different challenges and show you if and how I solved them. Number 1. Finding the right printing parameters. Setting up and using a resin printer seems to be very simple. While you do have to take some safety precautions, once you get used to it, the process is fairly easy. With FDM printing, 
you usually have to play with the print and bed temperature. Here one of the most important parameters is the exposure time for each layer. At first I used the default exposure time of 3 seconds. The prints had some problems that weren't necessarily related to the exposure time, but I started looking at possible tweaks. After doing my homework, I learned about the different calibration objects and decided on this one, the cones of calibration. This seemed very easy to understand, so I printed out a series of objects with different parameters. The results showed that the sweet spot was around 2.2 and 2.3 seconds. In a nutshell, on one side you must see full cones, on the other side you must see nothing. I started printing with these settings, but my prints kept failing more than before. Then, I printed a bunch of different test objects, and based on those the actual good value was about 2.8 seconds. Why was it completely different with the cones? I have no idea. The funny thing is that I only found the recommended settings after ones on Creality's website, and the value was exactly 2.8 seconds. The next challenge? Generating supports. With resin printers it's not recommended to just lay the objects on the plate, Usually they are printed at an angle with lots of supports. I won't go into the reasons now, but if you're interested, I recommend the video linked above which explains it very well. Litchi has a nice option to automatically position your objects and also automatically add supports. I was very happy with it and used it a lot in the beginning, but the results weren't that good. In some of these cases the exposure was also wrong, but mostly it turned out that the support side of the objects looked simply wrong. Somehow melted edges, wavy surfaces, inaccuracies and so on. This is a real problem because LEGO compatible objects must be perfectly sized and accurate on all sides. Resin printers are used mostly by people who print miniatures, figures and stuff like that, at least YouTube is full of this kind of content. I've also tried to print a few figures that had incredible tiny details and good resolution, but most of them have a base that can be on the support side and accuracy doesn't really matter there. With beams and other LEGO elements, this is a problem. As you can see, the opposite sides are almost perfect, but the support side looks ugly. I tried many combinations, light supports, heavy supports, I played with density, but none of these combinations gave me a satisfactory result. Then I asked some more experienced users, and they said to add supports manually. The suggestion was to use supports practically along all edges and see what happens. Well, that can be done with a test queue, but with a more complex LEGO element it would be definitely a challenge. And my test results with the cubes weren't so good either, they were much better than before, but the surfaces were still not perfectly flat. I tried something similar with the rims, manually spreading supports around the edges, but as you can see there's still room for improvement. I just did some additional testing with Anycubics ABS-like resin, since it arrived recently. I would say the results are a little better, but you can still see the inaccuracies on the axle around the support points, and the cube still has some rough edges. So, that's a challenge I just haven't been able to solve yet. If you have any recommendations or experience with proper orientation and support structure to get prints with accurate detail all around, please let me know in the comments. I also had some issues with the temperature in my garage. When I started experimenting it was about 18 degrees Celsius, even though the recommended temperature for resin printing is at least 25 degrees. I used this little heater, but honestly I didn't notice much difference between the results at cold and warm temperatures, at least the problems were the same. The next challenge is scaling and accuracy of the parts for resin printing. I made this part as a test element for the FDM printers, and also tried to print it with the resin printer. As you can see, the holes that were previously tested and scaled for another printer turned out to be too loose here, so the parameters definitely needed to be adjusted. I also downloaded a few files from Efferman's repository on Shapeways, he has some excellent designs that you can order by the way. As you can see, pin and axle holes seem to be too tight this time, which can be fixed with a bit of sanding, but this axle for example suffers from the problem with the support, due to these connections it's not straight enough on all sides. Gear meshing seems to be ok, that's at least a success. This is the gear by the way that I was expecting to see in the Pac-Man set. Printing complex objects has other challenges as well. This quarter panel fairing has a very nice and smooth surface, but not where the supports are attached, because unfortunately they leave marks. Also supports were needed inside the panel, and they seem to be almost impossible to remove. And here's the last point, the rigidity of the material. I mainly use Creality's Rigid Plus resin, which is supposed to be stronger than regular resin. Some of these pieces broke when I tried to remove the supports, and as you can see, these thin elements are pretty easy to break. The beam is a mystery, as I can't break it in any other place, although it did break here when I removed the support, that's another inconsistency. 
Anycubic's ABS-like resin seems to be more flexible. I can only bend this link but cannot break it, so the choice of resin might be also an important factor. So, how to sum it up? Resin printing is really promising because the initial setup of the machine and the whole process are pretty straightforward and the prints have incredible little details, really amazing. So if you want to print miniatures and similar stuff, this is totally the way to go. But for prints where you want the objects to be accurate and not distorted anywhere, it's not that easy to do. Yes, results are much finer than anything that could come out an FDM printer, but I simply couldn't find a way so far to make them look perfect on all sides. If you have experience with resin printing and have some advices, please let me know in the comment section. This printing method has great potential and it would be great if I could make it work with LEGO compatible parts. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.